Part 1, Evolution. Learning Objectives 2.1 to track the development of the practice of public relations from ancient times to the present. 2.2 to underscore the contribution to the field of two pioneers, in particular Ivy Lee and Edward Bernays, whose philosophies and policies set the tone for modern day public relations. 2.3 to chart the growth of public relations and its emergence as a major societal force in the 21st century. And 2.4 to examine the factors like social media that have propelled the practice of public relations as a powerful and valuable force in this new century. Public relations has come a long way. <clears throat> in the 1956 film, The Man in the Gray Flannel Suit, it was suggested that a freshly pressed suit and bathing regularly were the main criteria for success in public relations. It took over a hundred years for public relations to come of age. Gregory Peck's 1956 portrayal of this harassed and tortured public relations man didn't do much for the field's reputation. Today, public relations is responsible for billions of dollars in revenue. Learning Objective 2.1, to track the development of the practice of public relations from ancient times to the present. The Tylenol murders. This is a case, um, a, a very famous case and textbook example of uh, an exemplary practice of public relations. The Tylenol company handled the tampering of its products um, really in it with the utmost of professionalism and was able to save the company in a time when their products were sabotaged and customers were murdered as a result. The respectful way that Johnson & Johnson handled the crisis is a large reason that the field enjoys prominence today. Their credo of corporate values was a model and still is a model for companies around the world. So uh, for those of you too young to even Remember this, on September 30th, 1982, Johnson & Johnson confront, confronted sabotage of their products, which resulted in the murder of company customers. They handled the crisis really in an exemplary way. They were, they were um, transparent and forthcoming with information, and they really regained the public's trust, which is key to um, good public relations practice. They hold their corporate values sacrosanct, and it's a model for companies around the world. Johnson & Johnson in 2010, however, their products were recalled in the fall of 2010. Their products that were recalled included children's liquid Tylenol, thousands of artificial hips, and millions of contact lenses. This was a highly publicized product uh, recall, and the problems cast a pall over Johnson & Johnson's integrity. So any company's public relations reputation is fragile. The evolution of public relations. Modern public relations is about 100 years old. John D. Rockefeller Jr. in 1914 uh, called upon, um, it, well, he called upon uh, I.B. Ledbetter Lee for assistance um, when the famous Ludlow massacre occurred in his Colorado coal mine company. Um, Colorado militiamen and company guards fought against evicted miners and their families. A dozen women and small children were among fatalities in this massacre. So Ivy uh, Ledbetter Lee was a journalist and he was called to help Rockefeller deal with the crisis. Lee actually went on to become the father of public relations. John D. Rockefeller was responsible for the birth of a profession built on open communications. But the way Ivy Ledbetter Lee handled the crisis um, really set the tone for the field. Evolution influenced by Evolution was influenced by the growth of big institutions, heightened public awareness and media sophistication, increasing incidents of societal change, conflict, and confrontation, globalization and the growing power of global media, public opinion, and democratic capitalism, and the dominance of the internet and growth of social media. These have all influenced the growth of public relations. Ancient beginnings. Modern public relations is a 20th century phenomenon, but its roots, its roots are ancient. 
Bulletins in Iraq dating from 1800 BC told farmers of the latest techniques of harvesting, sowing, and irrigating, which helped the country become healthier and wealthier. Aspiring Greek politicians enlisted the help of sophists, or individuals renowned for both their reasoning and their rhetoric, to help fight verbal battles. Sophists set the stage for today's lobbyists. The Romans were masters of persuasive techniques. Julius Caesar would rally public support through published pamphlets and staged events. During World War I, the Creel Committee was formed to channel patriotic sentiments of Americans in support of the U.S. role in the, world, in the war. The Catholic Church established a college of propaganda in the 1600s to help propagate the faith. They wanted to inform the public about the advantages of Catholicism. Public Relations Pope Pope Francis, who assumed the papacy in March 2013, forged a positive public relations image around the world. He outstripped Kanye West in terms of Twitter followers. Pope Francis is considered the people's pope. The pope and other religious leaders maintain communication staffs to assist in relations with the public. The, communications, the chief communications official in the Vatican maintains the rank of archbishop and deals with the priest pedophile scandal. Of course, that's the worst of the public relations scandals that the church usually faces. Early American experience. Influencing public opinion, managing communications, and persuading individuals at the highest levels were at the core of the American Revolution. Colonists tried to persuade King George III they should be accorded the same rights as English men and women. Samuel Adams was among those who organized committees of correspondence to disseminate anti-British information throughout the colonies. He staged events like the Boston Tea Party, in which colonists masquerading as American Indians boarded British ships in Boston Harbor and pitched chests of imported tea overboard, which received a lot of media attention. And of course, is, is one of the most famous uh, events of that time. Thomas Paine wrote periodic pamphlets and essays that urged the colonists to band together, the first of which, Common Sense, sold half a million copies in a nation of fewer than three million people. And then, of course, um, the, the issue uh, that they were addressing was ta taxation without representation uh, in the Boston Tea Party. And that's something that we still uh, remember today. And so clearly it was a, without media or social media, uh, well, without modern day media, of course, there were newspapers. Uh, it, it has stood the test of time in terms of a PR, uh, a PR action initiative. Later American experience, Federalists versus Anti-Federalists, newspaper articles, pamphlets, the Federalist Papers. Federalists supported the Constitution and fought with Anti-Federalists who opposed it. The battle was waged in newspaper articles, pamphlets, and other organs of persuasion in an attempt to influence public opinion. Imagine the fight that would be on Twitter today. To advocate ratification of the Constitution, political leaders like Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay banded together under the pseudonym Publius to write letters to leading newspapers. The letters are bound in a document called the Federalist Papers. Into the 1800s, press agentry took hold in the 1800s. Amos Ke Kendall and Phineas T. Barnum were two famous press agents. They were notorious practitioners of the art of press agentry, in fact, which is a prominent but negative antecedent to modern public relations. President Andrew Jackson selected Amos Candle to serve on his cabinet in 1829. He was an influential assistant, performed every White House public relations task, speeches, state papers, messages, press releases, public opinion polls, He's considered one of the earliest users of the news leak. He developed the Globe, the administration's own newspaper. P.T. Barnum was also an industry pioneer, but some consider him a huckster to try to, try to fool the public. He tried to fool the public. He used public relations techniques to further his museum and circus. He was a master publicist who generated many articles about his traveling circus show. 
He staged bizarre events. Some people blame P.T. Barnum for shysters and hucksters that still plague the field. And an interesting side note is that Pace Environmental uh, Environmental Policy Clinic students uh, wrote a bill that became law in New York State earlier in 2017 um, that banned elephants in entertainment acts. And um, also, and interestingly, uh, that affected most circuses on um, all circuses that would enter New York State. And uh, P.T. Barnum and Bailey Barnum and Bailey's circus is now out of business as of May last year. P.T. Barnum Redux: Public relations communication should reflect performance and truth. Barnum's publicity-seeking methods are still effective. The Kardashians are publicity-generating masters of media. Love them or hate them, they do get a lot of PR. America's first publicity family is the extended Kardashian clan. They parlayed their personal predicaments into reality TV fame. Public relations renown, clothing lines perfume franchises, and a retail store in Las Vegas. The media continues to report their every movement. I find it fascinating they're even still on TV in their own reality TV show that people still watch them, but not my taste in TV, but they they are, people in, enjoy, um, I guess, seeing other people's lives, and maybe it makes us all feel a little better about ourselves. Kardashian quest for publicity continued. Discussion question, how does their ability to get publicity relate to the idea that public relations communication should always reflect performance and truth? We can have a field day with that one. Emergence of the robber barons. Big business took over the American Industrial Revolution. The American Industrial Revolution ushered in many things at the turn of the century not the least of which was the growth of public relations. The men who ran America's growing industries seemed more concerned with making a profit with improving than with improving the lot of their fellow citizens. Small mills and shops gave way to massive factories. Country hamlets were replaced by sprawling cities. Limited transportation and communication facilities became nationwide rail lines and communication wires. And the businessman was king. Railroad owners were led by William Vanderbilt. Americans cursed Vanderbilt and his ilk as robber barons who cared little for the rest of society. Most who depended on the industrialists for their livelihood felt powerless to rebel, but there were seeds of discontent. Bankers were led by J.P. Morgan. Oil magnets were led by John D. Rockefeller. Steel impresarios were led by Henry Clay Frick. Industrialists ruled the fortunes of others and were thought to care little for the rest of society. Enter the muckrakers. Muckrakers were a group of journalists that criticized operations of America's business enterprises. Reporters and editors dredged muck from the supposedly scandalous operations of America's business enterprises. Upton Sinclair's novel, The Jungle, attacked the deplorable conditions of the meatpacking industry. Ida Tarbell's history of the Standard Oil Company stripped away the public facade of the nation's leading petroleum firm. Her unproven accusations against Standard Oil Chair Rockefeller stirred up public attention. Captains of industry were rolled out into the public eye to answer for their sins, and there was a resulting wave of sentiment for legislative reform. And we see that continuing today. Breakdown of communications. The government got more involved. When free enterprise reached a peak in American history, the tide of public opinion was swelling up against business freedom, primarily because the breakdown in communications between the businessman and the public was considered a big issue. Congress told businessmen and businesses what they could and couldn't do. Conflicts between employers and employees began to break out. Industrialists did not know how to get through to the public. They tried to advertise in papers, paid publicity, 
people and press agents to paint over real problems, but they could not influence public opinion. How should businesses influence public opinion? The best way to influence public opinion was through honesty and candor. The truth still lies at the heart of modern-day effective public relations practice. Telling the truth was the method used to get the public to consider the business point of view. Learning Objective 2.2. To underscore the contribution to the field of two pioneers, in particular Ivy Lee and Edward Bernays, whose philosophies and policies set the tone for modern-day public relations. Ivy Lee, the real father of modern public relations. He felt strongly that the public should be informed, critics should be answered honestly, companies should strive for public confidence and goodwill, and distinguish publicity and press agentry from public relations. For Ivy Ledbetter Lee, the key to business acceptance <clears throat> was that the public should be informed. He disdained press agents who would use any influence or trick to get a client's story printed, even if it was meritless. He believed the only way businesses could answer, its crit could answer critics convincingly was to present their side honestly, accurately, and forcefully. Lee thought a company should strive to earn public confidence and goodwill, not just appease the public. Lee's advice to Rockefeller, tell the truth, because sooner or later the public will find out anyway. And if the public doesn't like what you are doing, change your policies and bring them into line with what people want. Very good advice. Very sound advice still today. Following the Ludlow ma Massacre, <clears throat> which was affecting John D. Rockefeller's Colorado Fuel, iron, Fuel and Iron Company, Rockefeller hired Lee, as we discussed earlier in this presentation. Lee encouraged Rockefeller to create a joint labor management board to mediate all workers' grievances on wages, hours, and working conditions. The mine workers and the public began to see John D. Rockefeller Jr. in a different light. Rockefeller started to see the workers in a new light as well. Efforts to humanize the Rockefellers. Lee featured the Rockefellers in real life situations. Playing golf, attending church, celebrating birthdays. This was aimed to represent the Rockefellers in terms that every individual could understand and appreciate. So the lesson was to humanize your clients if you want the public to be more open to communications from them. It is still useful for public relations professionals today, and it's something that I use with leaders that I promote. Poison Ivy. In the late 1920s, Ivy Lee advised the parent company of the German Dye Trust. Ivy Lee's reputation was assaulted in the press when he was linked to the parent company of the German Dye Trust. The smears against Lee rivaled the most vicious ones against the robber barons. Some argue that Lee was not particularly effective at getting business to change its behavior. He may have had good ideas, but putting it into practice isn't always easy. <clears throat> the parent company was an agent for the policies of Adolf Hitler. Lee was branded a traitor and dubbed Poison Ivy by members of Congress. Learning Objective 2.2, discussion question, why is Ivy Lee considered the father of public relations? Lee was among the first to counsel his clients that positive public relations start with, starts with action, with performance, and that positive publicity must follow a positive performance. This is why Ivy Lee is recognized as the individual who began to distinguish publicity and press agentry from public relations based on honesty and candor. Learning Objective 2.3, to chart the growth of public relations and its emergence as a major societal force in the 21st century. The growth of modern public relations. During World War I, President Woodrow Wilson established the Creel Committee under the leadership of journalist George Creel. It mounted an impressive effort to stimulate the sale of war bonds through liberty loan publicity drives and boosted public relations. The Office of War Information was established during World War II. It conveyed the message of the U.S. at home and abroad. It laid the foundations for the U.S. Information Agency as the U.S. voice around the world. World War II public relations officers helped sell war bonds, boosted morale of those at home, spurred production, and supported the war effort. It led to, the growth, to growth in the number of practitioners after the war. Companies felt the need to have public relations people speak up for them because of the combative attitude of President Harry Truman, who 
went over the largest institutions. President Nixon's cover-up of, of the Watergate political scandal brought new criticism of public relations. President Ronald Reagan reaffirmed the value of public relations. Pre-scandal, President Bill Clinton added the recognition of the importance of communication skills practice in government. President Barack Obama reinforced the power of communication in the White House. Counseling. Edward Bernays was the author of Crystallizing Public Opinion, the nation's first public relations firm, the Publicity Bureau, was founded in Boston in 1900 and specialized in general press agentry. Edward Bernays began as a publicist in 1913 and was instrumental in the war bonds effort. He was the nephew of Sigmund Freud, which is an interesting tidbit I learned in this textbook. Bernays was fascinated by a wide range of psychological theories and practices beginning to emerge in society and use psychology, sociology, and social psychology to reach individuals in terms of their unconscious desires, fears, and needs. The growth of counseling, Edward Bernays, from publicity direction to counsel on public relations. Bernays wrote, at first we called our activity publicity direction. We intended to give advice on clients on how to direct their actions and get publicity and public visibility for them. But within a year, we changed the service and its name to Council on Public Relations. We recognized that all actions of a client that impinged on the public needed counsel. Public visibility of a client for one action might be vitiate, vitiated by another action not in the public interest. Hill and Knowlton, Claire, Carl, Bayor and Associates, Newsom and Company, and Burson Marstet Steller opened public relations firms in New York. For many years, Hill and Knowlton and Burston Marsteller jockeyed for leadership in the counseling industry. Burson fumbles Facebook flap. Facebook planted stories about Google. The world's leading social media company was caught with an egg on, with egg on its face as a result of a sneaky campaign of its public relations agency to plan incriminating stories about its competitor, Google. How should Burson have handled its Facebook assignment? Should a public relations client always be, notif always be notified? Corporations. Arthur W. Page's Five Principles for Successful public relation Corporate Public Relations. Number one, make sure management thoughtfully analyzes relation to public. Number two, create system to inform employees about firm policies and practices. Number three, create system giving contact employees knowledge to be polite and reasonable to public. Number four, create system drawing employee and public questions and criticism back through organization to management. And number five, ensure frankness in telling the public about the company's actions. These five principles of successful public relations are as relevant now as they were in the 1930s. Corporations, Paul Garrett. While working for GM, Garrett explained that the essence of his job was to convince the public that the powerful auto company deserved trust. To make a billion dollar company seem small. Paul Garrett was the first director of public relations for the mighty GM in 1931, working with GM's CEO, Alfred Sloan. He never felt like an insider. GM executives often treated him with wariness. Learning Objective 2.3 Discussion Question Was the significance of Arthur Page What was the significance of Arthur Page to the development of corporate public relations? Learning Objective 2.4 To examine the factors like social media that have propelled the practice of public relations as a powerful and valuable force in this new century. Heightened Public Media Awareness Companies were obligated to consider minority rights, consumer rights, environmental implications, and a myriad of other social issues in the 1970s and 1980s, and of course, through to, to till today. Managers began to consider community relations a first-line responsibility. Most companies adopted a policy of conciliation and compromise. The corporate social responsibility, CSR, continued into the 1990s. Reputations were recognized 
as a valuable asset to be protected, conserved, defended, nurtured, and enhanced at all times. By 2012, 98% of American homes had television, more than 50% subscribed to basic cable, and 273 million North Americans used the internet. A plethora of channels and cable networks, talk radio stations, millions of blogs, websites, and social media outlets cater to different interests. Publics have become more fragmented, specialized, and sophisticated, and it's more challenging to reach with so many messages and so many channels. It's more challenging to reach uh, large numbers of people with, with any regularity. Societal change, conflict, and confrontation. Social and political upheavals in the 1960s dramatically affected public relations. Disenchantment with big institutions peaked during this time. Activists, groups, minorities, and consumer advocates meant large institutions needed professional communications help. The Vietnam War fractured society. Consumer movements and activist groups mobilized. Minorities began to protest for their rights, and people challenged the legitimacy of large institutions. Societal change, conflict, and confrontation continued. By the 21st century, non-governmental organizations, NGOs, took the place of consumer movements, renewed just disenchantment with those in charge of government and business. By the 21st century, activist movements morphed into established, well-organized, and powerful interest groups. Non-governmental organizations united by the internet proliferated around the globe. A new round of activism resulted from disapproval of the Iraq War, concerns about energy supplies and prices, climate change, and global warming. Spread of democracy and capitalism. Democracy and capitalism have broken out everywhere. Continuing repression, terrorism, and war in the Middle East has created setbacks, but the world is near completely wired. So the power of communication and public relations to build democracy is quite profound. Significant events to spur democracy, democracy included the 10 million citizens, or 70% of eligible voters going to the polls, to elect new leaders after the defeat of Saddam Hussein. Kosovo declared independence from Serbia. The Arab awakening extended into totalitarian nations like Syria in the winter of 2013. Even with setbacks in the Middle East and, and Russia's actions, democracy and the spirit of capitalism pervade. Growth of social media. In the 21st century, two-way communication grew with online access. The web and social media have had a phenomenal impact on public relations practice. The emergence of the internet and World Wide Web radically intensified the spread of communications. Close to 80% of adults are online and most are educated and most are connected to social media platforms. Email dominates internal communications. Journalists regard the internet as their primary choice of most organizational communications. Knowledge of and facility with the internet has become a front burner necessity for public relations practitioners. Public relations education. Over 200 programs offer concentrated study in public relations. The recommended changes to the public relations curriculum include imparting knowledge in areas like relationship building, societal trends, and multicultural and global issues. 70% of U.S. daily newspaper copy and 80% of U.K. newspaper co copy are estimated to emanate from public relations generated releases. Public relations should be incorporated into business schools. Journalists should be educated about public relations. Learning Objective 2.4 Discussion Where should the practice of public relations be situated in a university? It could be in uh, journalism departments, communication departments, marketing, advertising, they're related, but they're not public relations. Um, public policy, um, public administration programs, all those are possibilities. Case study, welcome to the NFL. Former NFL star Ray Rice and his wife Janae Palmer were involved in early morning in an early morning fight in the, an Atlantic City hotel elevator. There was criticism of the way NFL handled it, especially after a second video was released that showed Rice knocking Palmer unconscious. 
Adrian Peterson was suspended without pay for disciplining his four-year-old son with a wooden switch. Have you ever been, have, had you been public relations advisor to the NFL commissioner, what advice would you have given him after the Ray Rice incident was first reported? What is your view on the fairness of the Rice suspension after the second TMZ video was exposed? Should the NFL allow players like Rice and Peterson to, and future domestic abusers to remain in the league? What public relations initiatives would you recommend the NFL take relative to domestic and child abuse? Reflect on how the NFL handled the situations and support your opinions based on what you learned about truth and integrity in public relations. This will be a discussion on the discussion boards.